Canada is off to the semis. This week, we've been bringing you the stories of Canadian athletes as they count down to next year's Beijing Olympics. Among the hopefuls, Canada's women's soccer team. They captured bronze at the Pan American Games last month and are ranked ninth in the world. But while the team is excelling on the field, it's struggling with its checkbook. The CBC's Chris Brown reports. It's just a few weeks before the biggest women's soccer tournament in the world, and Canada's top players are psyched. We got our up, up, girls. Karina LeBlanc of Maple Ridge, BC, has played on U.S. college and pro teams, and this will be her 10th year representing Canada. It's an amazing thing to, to be doing what you love to do and then just getting the appreciation for it. LeBlanc was there four years ago for Canada's best ever international performance, a fourth place finish in the last World Cup. And there it is, the final whistle. Hundreds of thousands of Canadians tuned in on TV. Canada is off to the semi. LeBlanc says the pressure is on to do even better this time in China. So it's just going to be business, and it's going to be business at the greatest event for soccer, and it's just going to be amazing. Canada three, one, two, three! Canada! As the team prepares for arguably its most important tournament ever, there is real concern by some of the greatest Canadian women to ever play the game of soccer that the national team is starved for money, that the players aren't getting the attention they deserve, and that the women's program is treated as secondary by those in charge of Canadian soccer. I think that the women's program uh, uh, many times is an afterthought. Tracy David is a Hall of Fame player, a former national team member during the 80s, and is now the head coach at the University of Victoria. Something's missing. Carrie Serwetnik is also in the Soccer Hall of Fame and played on the national team. I couldn't believe that they didn't have a sponsor and they, you know, don't have any funding to play a game in Canada. And um, I, I just feel like that's outrageous that um, they've come to that situation. We're going backwards. We're not going forwards. We're not being creative. And why wouldn't we want to move forward to maintain our world-class standing in the world? This recent exhibition game is an example of what they say is wrong. Yes, those are boys under 16 playing the Canadian national women's team. They're playing boys because there's no money to play competitively against other women. The rule is the home team pays the visitors' travel bills. And paying for many of the best teams, Germany, Korea, Brazil, to come to Canada could cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. So, there have been no home matches. It doesn't compare to an international game because then, you know, you're playing against another country and, you know, there's that kind of rivalry going on, but it's the best that we can get right now. Colin Linford, the president of the CSA, has gone on record saying that having an exhibition game in Canada would bankrupt the organization. And um, I, I think that that is a, a ludic ludicrous statement to be making. That lack of international experience likely influenced Canada's performance in last month's Pan Am Games in Brazil. Things started off well enough with three straight wins against weak teams, but then came two big losses, including a 7-0 embarrassment to the Brazilians. Canada beat Mexico to salvage a bronze, Brazil took gold and the Americans silver. It seems like the CSA has swept them under the turf. Kerry Serwetnik says the lack of financial and promotional support in such a crucial year sends a poor message about the importance of the women's program. With them coming into the World Championship and not having funding, we're essentially recreating that message that no matter how girl, hard girls try, no matter how good they are, they're just not important enough. The Canadian Soccer Association's 2006 annual report says its budget for both the men's and women's national teams was $3.8 million. But it won't say what the split was between men's and women's programs, fueling criticism about a lack of transparency. 
However, in June, Association President Colin Linford told CBC Radio that if the men's team qualifies for the 2010 World Cup, it would bring in an additional $10 million. There's an understanding that the men's team is your number one priority. When you're looking at the base to, to generate revenue, then the men's World Cup is the, is the only one. The Canadian Soccer Association is well aware of how poorly received that comment was by many in the women's program. Linford was not made available for an interview with CBC Television. Instead, Canadian Soccer's head of marketing, Chris Colley, agreed to speak about efforts to find a sponsor for the women's team. Clearly, it is a hot spot. The partners are coming on board. I've mentioned that we're almost uh, at the point of announcing a title partner. I can also confirm, I mean, there, there is significant interest in, uh, in the women's team in particular. I know that's what you're asking about. And uh, even our existing partners who are involved with many different national teams programs, uh, you know, two of them over the last couple of weeks have called us to say, okay, gang, how do we get connected with uh, the women's team? In the meantime, the women's team is relying on the generosity of its biggest fan to get by. Were it not for him, players would not even be able to live or train in the same city. He is reclusive Vancouver multimillionaire Greg Kerfoot. This tiny picture is the only image we could find of him. Kerfoot's contribution of one million dollars means each woman gets a small salary and a place to live. Yeah, he's gonna miss. But his generosity is no substitute for increased funding. Clearly there's some strong interest, but again, I have to say, turning back the clock, you know, 12 months ago, the interest was with the under 20 men's national team. So it really, uh, while there is a grassroots foundation of support across the country, certainly as, as the specific teams compete at the world level, uh, there, there clearly is corporate interest that follows those teams. The players choose their words carefully when asked about money, the lack of visibility and of fan support. I don't think it's a failure for us to play here and not have a big crowd because again, we're getting to play, we're getting to be better, we're getting to do what we do. Ooh. We just got scored on. <laughs> For all the difficulties this team has faced, there is no doubt about the players' focus or their commitment. Many have now tasted international success and they yearn for it again. Perhaps success at the World Cup will re-engage the country and regain some of the excitement about women's soccer that's been allowed to lapse. Chris Brown, CBC News, Vancouver. We have to take a short break. When we come back, this story. You know, you can still play.